do. What exactly is blood and what does it do? The answer's now in Healthy. There I was one day on my way home for tea when I felt a funny feeling flow all over me. I'd really like to know what goes on inside me and find out what it's like to be healthy. So I thought very hard and I wished I was small. If I could get inside somebody, I would know it all. And all of a sudden, like a bump from the blue, I started to shrink. Believe me, it's true. And there was Blood's body lying not very far. She was having a nap, but her mouth was ajar. If you'd like to know what she's like inside, stick around a while and I'll take you for a ride. Yes. I know what you're thinking. What on earth is she doing in there? Well, I want to know what happens to our blood, where it goes and what it does. Blood's having an injection today and I've tagged along. Here goes. Woo! Oh, I made it. Oh! Oh, this isn't going to be as easy as I thought. Dear me, what a busy place. And what's more, it's all going one way. Oh, no point fighting against it, Ellen. You may as well go with the flow. Blood must it oh, get to every single bit of your body. When you cut your finger or graze your knee, what's the very first thing you see? Red blood. Oh, it moves everywhere. It's a very good transport system to carry things from one place to another. What other transport systems can you think of? All these people are going one way. All these cars are going one way. In the London Underground, the trains go one way through the tunnels. All the blood in our body goes round one way, too. It doesn't travel on road or rail. It travels around in blood vessels. And if you laid them end to end, blood vessels would stretch 100,000 kilometers. That's two and a half times around the Earth. So the blood vessels carry the blood around the body into every little part. But what's in the blood? Oh, I have to let Blood know I'm inside her. Hello? Come in, Blood? Yes. How are you? I'm in your blood system. Yes, I know, and I don't like the way you sneaked in either. You could have asked. Oh, I'm really sorry, Blood. I promise I won't do it again. Speak to you later. Now, Blood looks red to you and me, doesn't it? But actually, it's mostly a yellow watery liquid called plasma. And all these bits are floating around in it. Let's see if I can grab one. Uh, gotcha. This is a red blood cell. There are millions of them in your blood. That's why blood looks red. Looks a bit like a donut, doesn't it? Hey, don't play with that. It's got something really important in it. Hemoglobin. Hemo who? Hemoglobin. That's what carries the oxygen. And you don't go far without oxygen. Oh, yes. I remember oxygen. It's in the air that we breathe. Remember when we went into Blood's body with the air? I got sucked into one of her lungs. It was really nice, full of air sacs. Those sacs had blood vessels in them. That's where the oxygen goes into the blood. Then it's carried all around the body by the blood. Good thing, too, because without oxygen, the body doesn't work. Right then, red blood cell. I better let you get on with it. Now, can you think of something else that is carried around by the blood? Something that we all need to give us energy and help us to grow? Think back to the time when I went inside Blood's body with her food. Remember the digestive system? I got squeezed along the food pipe until I reached the stomach. I found Blood's food in balls being churned about in acid until it was small enough to go into the small intestine. Remember the inside of the small intestine? There were lots of villi, like little fingers sticking out. And they were full of blood vessels. The useful food like vitamins and minerals and protein get into the blood there. So, all around me in here, there is food giving energy to Blood's body, keeping her healthy. Oh, oh, Blood, what's this? You building something? Hey, Blood, there's a heap of bits here. Well, I cut myself this morning, and the platelets in my blood are plugging up the hole to stop the bleeding. Oh, clever stuff. You should be more careful, though, you know that? Right. These things here must be the platelets. 
Every time we cut ourselves, the blood starts to repair the broken blood vessels. The platelets rush up and form a clot, sort of like a plug. That way, all your blood doesn't pour out. What could you do to try and stop yourself getting a cut or stop germs getting into your blood if you do cut yourself? When you cut yourself, it's important that germs don't get in. So you should clean the cut with warm water and perhaps some soap if it's really dirty and put a plaster on. Very soon you'll get a scab coming on the cut. New skin grows underneath and covers everything up like new. I enjoy walking on the beach with men. There are lots of things to see. I collect seashells and look for plants and animals in the rock pools. There are some things you should never touch on the beach. Don't touch that, Rich. I mustn't touch things like that. They're very dangerous. We'd better come away from it. People leave rubbish lying around. These things are sharp. Why do people have to spoil things? Now Mummy's going to have to find a strong bag or a box so that she can pick them up and take them away before a child gets hurt. Yeah. Mum, look, someone's left an old bottle. That could cause a very nasty accident. And you're right, it's very sharp indeed. You have a very nasty cut. Why don't we go? Can't you stop them? Oh dear, I was wondering when that was going to happen. The big white things are my white blood cells. They don't like you being here, I'm afraid. Oh, well, why not? I'm not doing any harm. Well, you're not usually in my blood, are you? They think you're a germ. <laughs> they fight germs. What? Oh no! If your white cells think I'm a germ, and they're going to destroy me, blood. They're going to swallow me up because they think I'm going to make you ill. Oh, can't you tell them, Blood? Can't you tell them I'm a friend? Sorry, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> oh, no. And what are these things sticking to me? Oh, Blood, this is awful. Oh, those are probably my antibodies. They've come to check up on you, too. Antibodies? Oh, yes. Your body makes antibodies so that you can fight disease. And the doctor can help your blood to make antibodies. Oh. Hello, good morning. I'm Miss Patrick. Thank you. He's come to have his injection today. So now we're going to start by giving him some polio drops in his mouth to protect him from poliomyelitis. It'll produce antibodies to protect him from that. Okay. We'll do that first. <laughs> and now we have to have an injection to protect him from three diseases which would be diphtheria, tetanus, and whooping cough. We'll put that into his leg. Right. Like this. That's fine. And unfortunately now he has to have another injection in his other leg to protect him from yet another disease, which is meningitis. give Patrick the antibody protection he needs against these diseases and we'll see you again in a month's time for the next injection. Thank you. All right, fine. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, I'm still here, but I'm very tired of having to fight the antibodies and the white blood cells. I don't know if I can last much longer. Oh, no! What blood? Oh. Oops, sorry, I forgot you were there. I've just had an injection. You see, I'm a diabetic and I need to have medicine every day. All these children have diabetes. Every day, insulin is injected into their blood to keep them healthy. 
By looking after themselves properly, they lead active lives like everyone else. Someone with diabetes cannot control the level of sugar in their blood without help from insulin. And they have to keep testing their blood. First, I nearly could do my blood test. Mm, now I can really do it. They learn to give themselves injections. Boy! Hey! You get wrong Second now. time, and it was in your tummy, too. First, I like doing it in my leg. Now I'm getting used to it doing it in my arm. I'm getting really good at the injections now. Where do you like it? doing in your injections? In my arm. Where else? Stomach. Pardon? Stomach. Where else? Leg. Where else? So? My mum gives me injections twice a day. I have two injections a day, one in the morning just before breakfast and one in the evening just before tea. Uh, that helps me to keep a very close control over myself and I make sure that I measure my blood sugar levels very regularly as well. By testing their blood, people with diabetes make sure that the sugar is neither too high nor too low. A tiny drop of blood is put onto a special card and then the level of sugar can be measured. Diabetics eat healthy foods regularly and make sure that they eat carbohydrates to give them energy. I eat lots of things with carbohydrates in, like pasta, bread and potatoes. I can do all the things that you can do, but being a diabetic makes me feel special. Needles have a job to do, but only doctors and nurses use them. And people like Jody, who have to give themselves medicine, like insulin, to save their lives. Think about injections for a minute. Think about why you should never have one that isn't specially meant for you and given by a doctor or nurse. Lord! Lord, what's that noise? It's getting louder and louder. You're very near to my heart. It's a very important place, so don't you dare go in. You'll just be in the way. Oh, come on, blood. I can't come all this way without seeing the best fit. Sounds wonderful. Oh, I can make it, that is. The doctor uses a special tool to listen to your heart from the outside. Perhaps you could think about making one of your own. Then you could listen to your friend's heart and count the beats. In we go. <laughs> the heart is a pump. It's made of muscle. It's got a lot of work to do because it pumps all the blood to every part of your body to deliver oxygen and food. Blood's heart beats 70 times in a minute. How many is that in a day? See this map of blood's heart? The blood comes in here and is pumped down through these valves. Remember, blood only flows one way. And from this bottom chamber, it is pumped to the lungs where it picks up what? Yes, oxygen. Then it comes back in here. It's pumped down to the bottom chamber, and it's pumped from there everywhere. Perhaps you can work out how those valves work. Imagine how many times your heart is going to beat today. It's got a lot of work to do to keep going all your life. You can help your heart by keeping it healthy. Come on, Dad, do you want to go on that exercise bike? Oh, do I have to? Yeah, because I want to see how fit you are. OK, then. How, how about you, ma'am? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll challenge Dad to a fitness test. How will that? OK, then. Come on, then. I feel ill. 
The white blood cells have done their job. I can't fight them off any longer. Please, blood, find a way of getting me out. You found your own way in, so you can find your own way out. Oh, blood, please. I can't get out. I'm going to go round and round and round your blood system forever. Please, blood, look. I think you have a beautiful body. I think your heart is brilliant, really amazing, and I'll be telling everybody about it. Hmm, healthy? Yes, yes, really healthy. Obviously, you're very fit. Please get me out. Okay, I know. Do you really think I have a beautiful yes. body? Hang on to this, then. I'm going to give blood. Give blood? What for? Mum is going to give blood, too. The National Blood Transfusion Service is visiting our area today. Next, please. People give blood to help others who may need it in an emergency. Oh, take a seat. Thank you. Have you given blood at all? No, I haven't. First time, is it? If someone has an accident okay. and loses a lot of blood, it's important that they are given similar blood to their own in order to keep them alive. No serious illnesses or operations? No. Nope. Haven't had shingles or chicken pox in the last year? No. Had no ears piercing, tattoos, electrolysis or acupuncture in the last six months? No. Only people who are healthy can give blood. And before it is given to anyone, it must be thoroughly checked. Tetanus and tetanus. Right. Have you had anything? Yep. After answering all the questions, Mum has to have a blood test to make sure that she can give some blood. Who's next? If I can just have your hands a moment. This is a small test now to make sure you've got enough iron to give a full pint of blood. All right. Can I hurt it? No. Most people think this is a worse part. Mum's blood was fine. Plenty of iron in it. So she is able to go on to the next stage. In the next room, there are many people giving blood. Mum's turn next. Hello. The doctor comes to put a needle in her arm that draws the blood out. And, uh, you read the question, eh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They will take about a pint, but there's no need to worry. There's plenty of blood left in Mum's body. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. When I grow up, I hope that I will be able to give blood too. Are you okay, ma'am? I'm fine, thanks, Catherine. In fact, it's nice to have a lie down. Does it hurt? It doesn't hurt at all. And they say I'm going to have to stay here for about five minutes until they take out 450 mils of blood from my body. So you may as well have a little sit down and enjoy yourself. Okay, then I'll go and sit down. Okay. After she has given blood, ma'am has a rest and a nice cup of tea. Hello there, it's me, in the tube, still inside blood's blood. Please, someone open the lid. Nurse, yes, please open the lid, yes. See you in the brain next time, bye. Now that I am tiny, just think where I can go. I must visit every corner till it's time for me to grow. The stomach and the lungs, not forgetting the heart. Large and small intestine, I can get to every part. Clean blood's teeth, lie on her tongue, crawl in her foot pipe, lounge in her lung, swim in her blood, have a peep at her brain. I'd love to look around and hear again and again. Study her senses, taste, touch, smell. Find out how she hears, how she sees as well. Thank you, Blood, for letting me come in and see and find out what it's like to be healthy.